Uh, hello. In this video, I want to explain you uh, properties inside advanced fragmentation options here. And uh, I'll start with this fragmentation engine, engine um, drop down. Uh, it has Pro Boolean and for Cutter, as you can see. And Pro Boolean is good for if you are going to fragment this object using simple this Pro Boolean fragmentation uh, types. And Pro Cutter is good in case you are going to use fragmentation by shapes or draw fragment feature. Uh, basically, it's pretty the same, but uh, in some cases, using one engine may not provide good results, so you can just switch to another one and try uh, to get different results because it might be better. So, in ProBoolean, as you can see, it fragments okay, simple fragmentation, but if we will try ProCutter, well, it's also okay, but you can see there's some issue here. So for regular fragmentation you can use ProBoolean and if it doesn't provide good result you can try to ProCutter and uh, try to switch to ProCutter and try it. Okay, another feature, another property is this fragmentation seed. So uh, by default zero which means it will be random each time and uh, if I will let's say fragment this geometry let's say 10 pieces so here's a big one, you can see if I will delete and try again you, you will get a completely different pattern of fragments but if you will set here from some fragmentation seed like 100 you will unfragment it so I, here's one big piece if I will delete it and try again I will get it again so if you want to get the same pattern refragmenting some object each time you can use some special fragmentation seed property. And next property is phase threshold and it defines uh, the amount of faces the fragments uh, should have uh, otherwise it will be deleted. So let's say if uh, the fragment will have less than four faces it will be deleted. It's useful in case you are going to simulate your object and uh, in sometimes during fragmentation you may get like a fragment which is simple face or just a double face and to prevent such fragments from uh, existing in after fragmentation you can play with this property it, it, it actually cannot be lower than four uh, but if you are if you don't want uh, some fragments let's say even less than if the fragment if these fragments have uh, less than 10 faces you can set here 10 and everything with less than 10 faces will be deleted Okay, it's better to keep it at 4, it's the default value. And the next property is size threshold. Uh, I will set units set up to generic units here. So it's also uh, has some a low value here and it also defines uh, defines will be the fragments deleted after fragmentation or not. So if fragment will be less than uh, 0 0.2 size, it will be deleted. And you can check the size just creating some box so here's the box with one by one by one length, width and height and uh, size threshold is 0 0.2 as you can see it's very low It also may be useful in case you are going to simulate our geometry because uh, phys uh, physics engine sometimes is not so stable when you simulate very low, very small and big object and it might even crash. So everything what will be less than this object will be deleted. So you can try let's say fragment the same box, just make it bigger. Okay, so as you can see, some pieces are like like this one. Very very small piece here. Uh, it was deleted because b you ba basically you don't even need it. You don't even see it. And here's another one which was deleted. So if I will increase this size threshold, I will have less fragments. Okay. All fragments were deleted now. Okay. 
So, but but this is very small object, and uh, in case you fragmenting some geometry and you see that your fragments disappear after fragmentation, you can try to play with the size threshold property. And I will set it back to 0 0.2. And put this box back to fragmentation list and next property is material ID well basically it's pretty simple if I will convert to edi editable poly and assign some material ID to all faces let's say one so uh, zero means that the material ID will be assigned automatically and if I if you want some specific material ID to be assigned for inner faces so you can set here let's say 4 fragment your geometry and uh, outer faces still will have this material ID 1 but inner faces will have material ID 4 just like you want it otherwise it will if, if you will set here 0 after her fragmentation it will assign just uh, next material ID after existing or the same okay I will delete it next property is noise scale uh, property it uh, uh, works only in case you are using this proboolean fragmentation types and it defines uh, so you can see there is a noise strength while and uh, it uh, defines um, let's say I will set here zero and fragment and here are my fragments completely flat if I will delete and set here some noise I will get some noisy fragments so uh, when this uh, noise scale zero which means it's defines automatically is the best <coughs> noise scale for current uh, uh, fragment uh, current object you are going to fragment depends on its size but if you are want to use some specific scale you can set it here and fragment and here you can see scale is completely different you can set it lower and there's another scale now Now scale is very big, okay. uh, but uh, it's actually better to use this value to keep it this value at zero because it will uh, provide the best result. And the next property is uh, rift width, and it defines uh, amount of cracks between the fragments. So let's say if I will set it to one or fragment object. So here you can see uh, I have some gaps between fragments and uh, the next property is, mm, it, calls, it says fill rifts if I will have it on and refragment object I will have the, this, uh, the same cracks but they will be filled by some additional geometry so sometimes it might be useful because you can fragment your object with rifts and then select these rifts and uh, fragment them further and have some mortar between the big fragments we'll delete it okay set it to zero and the next fragment is, is the next property is bake animation it's on by default and what it do it what it does it say my object have some animation like this so if my bake animation is off let's say I will fragment it here so as you can see my fragments doesn't have this animation anymore but if my uh, bake animation checkbox is on and I fragment geometry it keeps all the animation don't you, you won't even see that there are fragments animated 
still looks the same like a solid object. All animations bake it so you can export it. Next property is create selection sets and when it's on I will fragment. So here's my uh, RF we fire fragments one selection set you can quickly select all the fragments from last simulation from last fragmentation pass uh, just uh, go into this selection set window and let's say if I well select I will fragment some other object I will have now second uh, layer so we can quickly select all the fragments first one or second one okay next property is animate impact fragments visibility by default it's off and what it does it let's say I have this object and uh, I let's say uh, I want to um, break it at some frame and it has some refractive material so I can set here Animate impact fragments visibility to on. Uh, fragment the subject. Uh, and now you can see that the original box object is still here. It's simply invisible right now. Its visibility is zero. And the fragments visibility is one. Uh, okay, it was bad example because I had my time slider at zero frame forgot to change it so uh, let's say you want uh, at some frame solid object to disappear and start and you want to start see fragments you can set this frame at let, let's say frame 70 fragment your object and as you can see original object still will be here but it will be invisible but the the frame before it will be visible and fragments will be will be invisible so uh, this way you can create some kind of cracks so okay another property is uh, do not store original object and it's off by default but sometimes you want uh, uh, as you may know by default Rayfire keeps original object and just simply hide it so uh, if I will fragment this object, so here's my fragments, but if I will go to unhide by name, my original box still will be here, so you can unhide it and uh, do whatever you want. But if I will have this do not store original objects checkbox on, after fragmentation I will lose the subject. So now it's gone, I, and I can't. I can't restore it anyhow, even through the manager. I can simply delete fragments, but I will lose original geometry. Okay, next to uh, properties remove middle edge vertices, and it uh, might be useful in case you are going to export your fragments inside some game engine. Uh, I'll show you how it works. So let's say I'll set here for boolean and noise strength is will be zero. I will fragment. So here's my fragment, and uh, here we can see that it has some unneeded vert vertex. Usually you may get much more such vertices. And take a look at other geometry. Here again, just a tool, uh, vertices which you don't need at all. Here another tool, and here's another one, uh, and the same here. 
So uh, in case you are going to export your geometry inside some game engine, you can set here remove middle edge vertices on uh, use sorry and use some uh, low uh, remove angle threshold here like five and if you will fragment again uh, you won't get such vertices. Your geometry will be clean, and there will be only vertices you need. Okay, next property is change wire color, and by default it's on, and it means that uh, it will simply create, uh, it will simply assign random wire color to the fragments after fragmentation, as you may see here. And if you are not, uh, if you will set here off, all the fragments will have the same wire color as original geometry. So sometimes you may need the fragments to have different wire co wire color. Sometimes you may need them to have the same wire color. So here we can set this property on and or off. And uh, the last property is convert to mesh, and pretty simple by default you get editable poly fragments and uh, if you are going if you want to have editable mesh you can set your convert to mesh on and you will get editable mesh so that was property that were properties uh, advanced fragmentation options uh, hope this tutorial helped you and thank you for watching